If you were a child in the 80s, flipping through the channels, and you stumbled across this eerie setting, and heard a creepy voice talking about an underworld unseen by most, you may have jumped under your covers. But, if you're a budding horror fan, then you settled in and enjoyed your nightmare fuel. Because it was time for Tales from the Dark Side. Like similar shows from the era, Tales from the Dark Side was an anthology. One week, you might get a spooky episode about a child tormented by monsters. And the next week, you might get an offbeat tale that tapped into the impending technology boom. My son is not a computer. Well, he's in there somewhere. I'm right here, Dad. Kevin, you stay out of this. Although Tales from the Dark Side spanned across different genres, it was still firmly rooted in horror and dark comedy. After all, the series was created by the legendary George Romero, who's known for the Night of the Living Dead series and one of my favorites, Creepshow. In fact, following the success of Creepshow, Laurel Entertainment, the company that Romero co-founded, wanted to move ahead with the Creepshow TV series. But Warner Brothers owned the rights to elements from Creepshow. <laughs> with that, Romero went ahead and created Tales from the Dark Side. Renowned writers such as Clive Barker, Harlan Ellison, Stephen King, and many more contributed to writing duties. Romero's longtime collaborator, Tom Savini, also came along for the ride, lending his very particular set of skills to the mix. The show was rounded out with familiar faces and even a few up-and-coming Hollywood stars. What's ailing you, boy? You're dead, Grandpa. We all have our personal favorites when it comes to shows like this. With that in mind, here are 10 of my favorite Tales from the Dark Side episodes. Let's kickstart our list with one of many fan favorites, The Circus. This one starred Kevin O'Connor as a journalist named Bragg who finds himself in a seemingly deserted circus. It doesn't take long for him to get to work writing a scathing article on the venue. The last flickering flame. Showmanship. Things get interesting when the circus owner, Dr. Niss, as played by William Hickey, enters the picture. Eventually, Bragg requests a private show, and Niss is more than happy to oblige. As a fan of classic monsters, I really enjoyed this episode. Early on, we're basically promised some monster action. And in that respect, this episode delivers. Bragg encounters a disturbing, animalistic vampire, and we get glimpses of other iconic monsters. Although here, they're presented in a distinct Tales from the Dark Side form. Another great aspect of this one is just watching Bragg's transformation. He begins as a skeptic, quick to write off the circus as a scam, but he quickly changes his tune. Open their hearts to this horror. The performances from the two leads is also solid, especially William Hickey. You may recognize him from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and Tales from the Dark Side of the movie, but here he's pitch perfect as this utterly creepy little circus owner who relishes putting Bragg through hell. You're a tough customer, Mr. Bragg. A tough customer indeed. <laughs> Let's keep the spook show rolling with our next entry, Halloween Candy. They put toilet paper in my trees. That's because you didn't give them any Halloween candy. This one stars Roy Poole as Mr. Killip, a miserable old man who despises Halloween. The mere thought of neighborhood kids knocking at his door in search of M&Ms and Skittles triggers this guy to no end. If I'm lucky, maybe one of them will drop dead of an overdose of sugar right there on the doorstep. After grumpy old Mr. Killip is left alone by his son, it doesn't take long for him to run into some trick-or-treaters. Naturally, he resorts to yelling at the kids, threatening them, and even dumping a slimy, toxic mess into one kid's trick-or-treat bag. Yuck. So, if ever there was a character demanding comeuppance, it's clearly this guy. In terms of sheer nastiness, Mr. Killip gives Ups and Pratt from Creepshow a run for his money. Trick or treat. As the tale plays out, our Halloween hater finds himself haunted by monstrous visitors and appropriately enough, cockroaches. Bastards! Halloween Candy is one of three episodes directed by Tom Savini. Naturally, with him and special effects artist Howard Berger involved, we also get some vintage creature work. Trick or treat. 
and that alone makes this darkly comic tale a must watch. What are you, some kind of a fan? I wish to make a business proposal. Up next, we have Distant Signals, which is a departure from everything else on my list, but still worth checking out. As I mentioned earlier, throughout its run, Tales from the Dark Side dipped into other genres. In this case, we have a lighter episode that explores fantasy and film noir. Distant Signal stars veteran actor Darren McGavin, best known for his work in the cult hit Kolchak the Night Stalker series, A Christmas Story, and a ton of other film and TV appearances. Here he plays Van Conway, a washed up actor drawn into a rather bizarre scenario. Van Conway is approached by a mysterious investor named Mr. Smith, as portrayed by Lenny Van Dolan. And apparently he's a diehard fan of Max Paradise, a short-lived critically panned 1960s detective show which starred the now down and out Van Conway. I'm not an actor anymore, you understand? I'm a bartender, I full beers in the corner bar. Mr. Smith and his people very much want Max Paradise renewed and they're willing to do whatever it takes to see their favorite show resurrected. This episode is very relatable. We live in an era which frequently looks to the past via TV revivals, sequels, and reboots. But for the purposes of Distant Signals, this nostalgia factor works. In this story, the beloved Max Paradise seems to have a far deeper and more profound meaning, at least for its fans. Distant Signals isn't your typical Tales from the Dark Side episode. Instead of going for scares, this one maintains an upbeat tone and almost feels like a story you might have seen in the 1980s Twilight Zone. Also, bonus points for featuring David Margulies, who I mainly know from The Sopranos and, of course, the mayor from Ghostbusters. Our next episode is Family Reunion, the second entry on my list directed by Tom Savini. This tale opens on a grim note as we're introduced to a father on the run with his wife in pursuit because apparently he's kidnapped their son. But we soon learn the boy is actually being hidden away by his father because when the moon is full, little Bobby becomes a werewolf. This premise is a perfect fit for Tales from the Dark Side. First off, Tom Savini's guiding hand is prominent. Whereas the circus only gave us a glimpse of a werewolf, family reunion goes all out. But Savini also nails the tone, dark atmosphere, and he even includes some easter eggs that horror fans will appreciate. Another Romero collaborator, Patricia Tallman, who you'll recognize from Knight Riders and the 1990 remake of Night of the Living Dead, does a great job here as Janice Perry, the mother tracking down her missing son. Young Daniel Terrence Kelly, who plays Bobby, is also convincing in his role. You don't see too many kid werewolves, and that alone makes for a unique twist on the theme. It's Bobby. Bobby's changed. Last but not least, we have the star of the show, Stephen McHattie, who portrays Robert Perry, the struggling father desperately hoping to find a cure for his son's curse. McHattie is great in most anything he does, so seeing him here only made me wish he'd appear in even more episodes of Tales from the Dark Side. Family Reunion is a compelling episode with clever twists, memorable performances, and for many fans of the show, Family Reunion is considered among the best. Our next episode, The Odds, is another one of the celebrated entries in the series. This one stars Danny Aiello, who delivers a killer performance as Tom Vale, a grizzled bookie who never refuses a bet. And they're off. The focus here is squarely on the narrative and the engaging human drama. Our setting is a simple, smoky bar, and that's all we need. The odds opens on a grounded and realistic note. However, when our lead Tom Vale is challenged by a mysterious gambler, as played by Tom Noonan, we're taken down a strange path. Somebody tickling your leg or what? It's obvious some kind of supernatural element is at play, but what exactly is going on takes some time to unravel. But one thing is clear. The stranger is an adversary, placing bets that he can't lose, much to Tommy's growing frustration. Too high for you, Tommy? Too high? That phrase ain't in my dictionary. And that brings us to the true highlight in the odds, simply watching these two go at it in a battle of the wits. You just have my money here tomorrow. If you win. Horror fans will recall Tom Noonan from his role in Manhunter as the Tooth Fairy. Here I am. Yeah. Here he's a lot less unhinged, but he's still channeling some sinister vibes. You can't go wrong, it seems. These two have great chemistry throughout, but I think Danny Aiello steals the show. 
Aiello has had many memorable roles over the years, but I mainly know of him from another one of my horror favorites, Jacob's Ladder. Here, Aiello's intense performance makes the odds one of the many gems in Tales from the Dark Side. That's my reputation, I stick with it. Up next, we have Sorry, Right Number. This one was written by the king of horror, Stephen King. Hello? In Sorry Right Number, Katie Wiederman, as played by Deborah Harmon, receives a cryptic and disturbing call that sends her into a total panic. As the episode plays out, Katie desperately tries to uncover the source of the call. It was not a prank, Bill, and it was not a wrong number. It was someone in my family. This episode is an interesting product of its time, and I don't just mean the use of landlines with mile-long cords. This story reminded me of a time when people actually just sat down and had extended conversations on the phone with family and friends. However, I will say one thing that has never changed, the fine art of dodging phone calls we'd rather not have. I, uh, I have a little diarrhea, Mom. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> diarrhea, that's great. In all seriousness, the main reason Sorry Right Number works is because King takes a simple premise and runs with it. Back in the 1980s, there wasn't an army of scam calls, but people still received unwanted calls, some of which could be downright creepy. And that element is something a horror genre and this story wisely capitalizes on. Please. Honey, calm down. Whatever it is, it can't be that. Deborah Harmon gives a great performance here, and I think her obsession with the mystery call is really what keeps you hooked. Harmon is another familiar face, best known for roles in Bachelor Party and Just the Ten of Us. But if you missed her there, well, I'm sure you caught her brief appearance in Back to the Future. The case of missing plutonium was in fact stolen from their vault two weeks ago. As the mystery plays out, Katie's family, including her husband Bill, as played by Arthur Taxier, are supportive. But ultimately, the identity of her caller is something she's left to discover on her own. And you feel for her because this is Tales from the Dark Side where cool twists of fate are all too common. Sometimes, sometimes people get confused about dolls. Next up, we have the Giesen Stacks. Now, as I've mentioned before, creepy dolls are a staple in horror anthologies, and Tales from the Dark Side is no exception. But in this case, we get a whole family of creepy dolls. They're the Giesen Stacks. They want to play with us. This story kicks off when a little girl named Audrey receives a dollhouse, complete with its own tiny inhabitants as a gift from her uncle Richard. The thing is, Richard found the dollhouse in an empty home where the previous owners mysteriously vanished. Despite the fact that these figures obviously originated from some toy aisle in hell, little Audrey, as played by Lana Hirsch, falls in love with them anyway. Kids always seem to love the most cursed toys. Well, you know how kids are. Audrey's doomed parents, Edith and Sam Hummel are portrayed by Tandy Cronin and Craig Wasson of Nightmare on Elm Street 3 fame. As the story unfolds, they find themselves struggling as real life events start mirroring Audrey's playtime with the dolls. Mr. Giesenstag gets sick, and misses a day of work, and the next day I get sick. <laughs> I miss a day of work. What's refreshing about the Giesenstags is they're unlike Chucky or most of the other murderous dolls we're used to seeing in horror. These figures are far more subtle and just have an unnerving presence. There's something wrong with those dolls. There's something evil. The highlight of this tale, though, is easily Craig Wasson's performance. He's the only one who really notices the Giesenstack's dark influence, and as the story plays out, he becomes increasingly unhinged. Does he break all his bones? Honestly, who wouldn't lose it in a situation like this? There is not going to be any funeral because none of your dolls is going to to die. Oh God. Next up we have The Last Car, an episode that will prove even a simple train ride can be a nightmare in this show. Our lead is a young university student named Stacy, as played very well by Begonia Plaza. Stacy is just trying to get home for Thanksgiving. However, after she boards the last car of her train, you quickly realize this is going to be a rough ride. There's only three other passengers, a woman, endlessly knitting, a curious man who's tough to get a read on, and a bizarre, restless kid who seems to be all alone. Two times, double dog dead! Another key aspect of this tale is that the passengers are terrified of tunnels. And these disturbing sequences really make you wonder 
what exactly is going on. The true meaning behind all of these unsettling elements is basically open to interpretation. In short, the last car is like a fever dream you can't wake up from. Begonia Plaza is perfect in this role, delivering a grounded performance that I'd say ranks among the best in the series. Am I on the right train? We should have stopped at Mystic and Guilford. We haven't stopped since I got on. Although The Last Car was one of the later season two episodes, I actually think it works as a perfect introduction to the series, showcasing one of the more macabre corners of Tales from the Dark Side. Tunnel. The next episode on my list is The Devil's Advocate, and this is another standout entry written by the series creator, George Romero. It's midnight again, and this is Mandrake, the Devil's Advocate, and I'm on a rampage tonight, so uh, if you're calling in, you better think twice. In this tale, Jerry Stiller devours every last inch of scenery as Luther Mandrake, an over-the-top radio host with a sharp tongue and a decidedly cynical worldview. A steam fitter for 24 years? I wouldn't be a steam fitter for 24 minutes. He's lucky he's lost his job. Go on out and celebrate, why don't you? Mandrake's ability to tattoo his callers while offering a bleak commentary is both darkly comedic and entertaining as hell. Where are you calling from? However, what's great about this one is when the tables turn, we shift into a thought-provoking meditation on the impact of Mandrake's venomous rants. I can turn you off. They make you sit there and stay on the phone. It turns out, dedicating his life to delivering a non-stop stream of doom and gloom has some grisly and transformative consequences. I can't stand it anymore. More red lights and whining voices. Do you think you have a personal exclusive on tragedy? Aside from the deeper implications of Romero's script, the real highlight of The Devil's Advocate is Jerry Stiller. I mainly know of him from his role as George Costanza's dad from Seinfeld. Here, Stiller puts his comic chops to use in a much darker setting. But the end result is one of the most humorous and surprisingly compelling characters in the entire show. Before we move on to my number one favorite episode, let's show some love to five honorable mentions from the series. you ever call me dad again i don't know who you are or what you are but i do know that i'm not your father your soul jack your soul i said i'd give you a million dollars for all the rights to your eternal soul when the lord calls you're supposed to answer i ain't heard nobody calling of course my hearing ain't what it used to be It was my daughter's room. Is that the closet? It was, but it's locked now. And that brings us to my number one favorite Tales from the Dark Side episode, Inside the Closet. This horror gem was written by Michael McDowell, and it's yet another episode directed by Tom Savini, so settle in for even more horrific imagery. Roberta Weiss plays Gail Ainsley, a grad student who rents a room from Dr. Fenner, as played by Fritz Weaver. Unfortunately for Gail, there's a mysterious undersized closet in her room. As the story unfolds, we soon learn something, or someone, lives inside the closet. And it damn sure isn't friendly. Weiss plays Gail with just the right amount of nuance. She's clearly spooked, but she's not about to run away either. Although she probably should. Once again, Fritz Weaver delivers, this time with an understated performance and an oddball charm that keeps you guessing. For example, when Gail voices her concerns, he's dismissive enough to make you wonder if he's just a clueless landlord or if he knows more than he's letting on. And this dynamic adds to the tension and suspense throughout. There's something living in that closet, Dr. Fenner. Fritz Weaver is a very familiar face here on the channel. He's appeared in Night Gallery, Creepshow, and the classic Twilight Zone. Speaking of which, when I think of that series, iconic episodes such as Nightmare at 20,000 Feet spring to mind. 
But when I think of Tales from the Dark Side, Inside the Closet feels like the quintessential episode from the series. And the fact that the episode features old school practical creature work only makes it even more of a standout. Inside the Closet is Tales from the Dark Side at its best. So, there we have it. My top 10 favorite Tales from the Dark Side episodes. There's a lot to love about this show. Paul Sparrow's unforgettable narration, the dark, offbeat tone, and the many campy moments of insanity. This was a show that knew what it was, and clearly everyone behind it strived to entertain. It's also a show that certainly screams 1980s, and for me that's part of the charm. It's impossible to watch Tales from the Dark Side and not feel like a kid again, spooked out but morbidly curious to find out what's hiding under the bed. If you're a fan of Tales from the Dark Side, feel free to comment below, let us know about some of your favorites in the series. Thanks for watching everyone, until next time, try to enjoy the daylight. Later. <laughs>